Watchdog and Land Trust. Uh, and here at Lewis and Auburn, uh, we have more of our trails. So we're, we're leading a series of, uh, of snowshoe walks with partners like the Historical Society uh, between now and, and mid-March. So hopefully we'll continue to have, have some snow <coughs> to, to walk in. Uh, this area is, is, is fairly important for a number of reasons. Jim will talk about why it's important historically. Uh, but the city of Auburn and its neighborhood of New Auburn uh, recently went through a master planning process. And one of the ideas that emerged out of that was to create a, a green belt, or a greenway around the southern end of the neighborhood. Uh, so Oak Hill Cemetery here is part of that. And the vision is to connect uh, pedestrian and bicycle access from uh, the, the Androscoggin River through Oak Hill Cemetery to the Houston Farm, where we'll walk shortly, across South Main Street. And on the other side of South Main Street is Sherwood Forest, uh, a parcel partly owned by the Land Trust, partly owned by the City of Auburn, and then back to the Little Androscoggin River. So with, with a couple of key sections, we actually will, the people would be able to start in, in the village area and do a loop <coughs> around the neighborhood, predominantly in, in open space and certain land. Uh, so I'll talk more about the Houston Farm once we get there. That's actually this, this road here along the cemetery, it's, it's bordering the, the woodlot portion of the Houston farm. Um, so again, I'll talk about that when we come back up, but I'll turn the floor over to Jim. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I would uh, tell those of you uh, that don't know uh, the uh, side today. Uh, David Young is our president, uh, Ben Hodgkins uh, is our secretary, and uh, my name is Jim Sargent. Uh, I think that Michael O'Shea is um, uh, as a way of step The, uh, the history lesson is that the uh, people that are interred here largely uh, embraced that, uh, that period of development from the uh, early uh, 1820s uh, and up into the present uh, of uh, Auburn itself, as uh, uh, then as well as uh, the, uh, the garden. And so in here we have interred uh, the movers and shakers, uh, the industrialists, uh, the uh, shopkeepers, uh, and uh, the uh, educators, doctors, and uh, I'll point some of them out as we go by. Uh, I don't obviously have the uh, uh, gear, uh, the opaque projectors, the uh, <coughs> flannel grass and so on, so instead we'll lose, use other mechanisms in order to uh, uh, then uh, breathe some light for us. So let's go out. There are some uh, now, are we able to then uh, to make it to both sides, or uh, where are we going to? How far are we going to be able to walk? Let, let's uh, let, let's take the, this to its full full gamut, and then we'll, we'll gauge time when we come, right. when we come so back we're going up. Go down below as well. Yeah. All right. So uh, we'll uh, uh, then start here. This is the newer section, if you will. Uh, there <coughs> are in excess of uh, 1,200 sites, and most of the multiple uh, individuals buried there. So we're talking four, five thousand, I would think, uh, souls here. Uh, very, very, certainly. Uh, and uh, let's uh, head up and uh, move in that direction, I would, uh, where you see the largest monument uh, here uh, on site, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, who's buried there. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know that uh, General was the most auspicious uh, individual to be very sure, but <laughs> temple, well, not uh, So, the method we're going to use to visit the individuals who have gone before us is a little bit of living history. So. I will, in fact, uh, give you uh, <laughs> General <laughs> Jonathan <Yeah>. Augustus Hill. <clears throat> Ladies, uh, gentlemen, uh, having deported myself, 
in uh, a manner fitting uh, an officer and uh, the leader of my men on uh, August 16th, uh, 1864, at uh, Deep Run, Battleground, Virginia. And uh, in so doing, having been uh, separated from my left arm, it was decided that uh, I should be uh, breveted up from Colonel to Brigadier General of the 11th Maine Volunteer Infantry. It uh, is an honor, uh, which I accepted with a mixture of uh, both appreciation and uh, humility. Uh, as I'm sure uh, you can all uh, appreciate my feelings on that matter. <coughs> well, uh, as you were, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> well done, very well good. Done. Yeah. Yeah. And so I know that some of you are acquainted with the term brevet, but it was a practice that was increasingly common towards the end of the Civil War, as we call it. Uh, and uh, it was done generally because someone had uh, shown particular uh, valor uh, in the field. But it was done more as an honorary uh, practice, and it did not uh, include a pay increase or uh, additional uh, responsibility. You didn't get the, uh, uh, to be an actual Brigadier General, but that is, obviously, it left its mark on uh, the General. He uh, passed away in uh, Pennsylvania, and then had his, had his uh, remains brought back here. Uh, and uh, as people often do, uh, you know, to be recognized at uh, where, they, where they grew up, to see what they accomplished in life. So that is probably the, the only research I did at this level. This is the newer section, if you will. The, uh, uh, the stones go from uh, early 1800s on up until the present. And uh, the, uh, <coughs> I will tell you, uh, since we're up here, this will be a fitting time when I'm talking about the people here, is that there is an evolution in the um, uh, decoration of grave sites. Early New England grave sites uh, were uh, commonly slate, uh, uh, quarried locally, uh, dark, uh, slim, and uh, uh, tall pieces. And they were decorated initially with dead heads and then with um, uh, angels, uh, the sentiments being something more gruesome because they were in touch with uh, their um, mortality uh, and the difficult, uh, just difficulty with. Uh, with uh, the elements and so on, and dying from exposure and so on, and uh, and also uh, from their uh, puritanical yes, uh, up upbringings. Run away, then there. Welcome, good. Uh, Hi. Hi. Did he serve after he lost his arm? Oh, I think that, uh, I would say that it was the end of the war, 1864, 1865. He considered himself part of that last push that uh, uh, then captured Lee, uh, and. Uh, I, I, I don't have the information as to whether he did, in fact, continue. Yeah. I suspect volunteers that he was probably uh, a, a part of that war. But, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about uh, uh, Brigadier General uh, Hill. You lose an arm, you're, like, you're kind of handicapped as far as shooting a rifle. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. And absolutely. this is generally probably didn't yeah. do much of that. So I, I was just making comments yeah, on the fact feel? that this, the uh, decoration here is uh, uh, in line with the 1800s, uh -huh. uh, as are mo pretty much everything that we're going to see today. Uh, the earlier uh, pieces uh, that you associate with New England uh, um, cemeteries, the, uh, the slate and so on, I found one, and it was decorated with urns uh, and uh, willows, which is much more uh, 1800s yeah. than 16, 17. So, lead on. Am I 